Welcome back to the Mighty Pod. On today's show, we're joined by Kareem Helmy, an independent researcher focused on Bitcoin mining. We discuss his novel use of nonce analysis to better understand the ASIC topography of the network, also its energy footprint. Are you a retail or institutional investor interested in Bitcoin mining companies? The Miner Mag brings you free data and analysis from all major NASDAQ listed Bitcoin mining operations to know who stands out. Check out visualized metrics and data dependent stories at theminermag.com. Welcome back to the Mining Pod. We got Kareem Helmy joining the show, a friend of the show and a friend in real life. Kareem, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Will. Uh, thanks for having me on. Cool. So we're going to talk about your news report. You teamed up with the Coinmetrics team to publish your findings on more announced analysis. The background from this is is one of the first bigger pieces of research you did in this space with announced analysis back in 2019, maybe. Correct me in a second. Basically able to fingerprint the Bitcoin mining network uh, by machine type as best as you can using now it's analysis. So I'm going to hand it over to you. That's going to be the entire topic of the show is this new paper. We're going to be showing it on the YouTube page. We'll go through like the tweet thread with some images. So if you're watching on YouTube, you'll have that. If you're listening on audio, definitely find Cream's Twitter account, give him a follow, and then go to his report, download it, read it, look through the images. This m- I mean, I'll be frank, probably the best piece of research research we've had this year. Maybe, maybe. We'll see what the end of year brings, Cream. You you might get supplanted. No, I think it's probably the best. Uh, so follow along with it. But I'll hand it over to you to sort of lay the land on the whole topic. Sounds good. Um, yeah, so uh, Anons is just the solution to a proof of work, right? Um, it's the output of the computation that the miner does. Um, that causes the double SHA-256 hash of the block header to be below a certain target value, um, which is generally determined by the network efficiency. Or, sorry, by the network difficulty all over the place today. Um, and uh, yeah, so kind of taking a step back, like from a number theory perspective, all the nonces should generally be random uniformly distributed if you have random, they're, they're randomly distributed across like uh, 32 bit in space, um, the, the, the actual solutions in practice, though, what we see is that the solutions that are found in reality and not just like the, um, the, the, the theoretical solutions, uh, actually have pretty strong patterns to them. Um, and what we've been able to determine is that that's caused by, uh, non-uniformities in the ways that, uh, ASICs, which are mining machines, uh, handle, uh, handle finding the nonces. Um, and because there's this non-uniformity, you can basically just back into the hardware distribution from uh, the information that's available on chain if you're able to figure out what the fingerprints are for each uh, machine type. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about how you... How, I'm actually curious how you like found this out in the, in the first place, going back to the initial report, how you like thought about coming up with this whole process. And then let's talk about like the process you went through on the practical standpoint. like pointing machines to the Luxor Relay and all that? Yeah. Um, So in about 2020, uh, I was kind of doing some work for Coinmetrics at the time as a a freelancer and um, uh, noticed that there was a synchronization timeline uh, where pretty much like... Actually, I noticed there was these weird streaks in the nonce patterning. If you just plotted everything out, if you plotted out every nonce, there's like four streaks uh, across the distribution. If you synchronize those with the like S9 release dates, you can kind of find out that those are basically just caused by the way that the S9 samples. Um, and here we have like just kind of the the uh, distribution from an actual S9 that'll show you. Um, on the actual nonce distribution, it looks pretty similar uh, for periods where the S9 was very dominant. Um, so yeah, saw these streaks. Um, kind of was like, oh, that's funny. And then uh, my girlfriend actually was like, no, dude, can you like can you do anything there? Uh, kind of back into it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we did, um, so we figured out the proportion of S9s that were mining on the Bitcoin network, um, topped out, I believe around 70%. Um, and yeah, so we did that. Uh, it was very early prototype and we kind of released that, um, had a good run, but eventually was obsoleted because there was a subsequent machine model, um, released by micro VT that, um, had an overlapping nonce pattern. So 
you know, we started with a good with a good model. Um, it kind of broke down. Uh, we started. I, I started thinking like at the time I was at, at Galaxy. I started thinking like, okay, how do I fix this? Um, ended up leaving Galaxy. Now I have a bunch of time on my hands. I'm I'm just like I'm kind of chilling. I'm 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 on the beach somewhere, and uh, I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna. I'm you made gonna, it. Yeah, you made it. Yeah, I'm gonna do some better stats, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, so just uh, had been talking to one of the guys at Luxor, actually, like Ethan uh, Vera, uh, a while before that, and he had suggested like uh, just renting one of each machine, um, and so so I did that. Uh, and went on, uh, the website he suggested, um, and just, uh, rented one of each of the, each of the major models. Uh, and where I wasn't able to rent one, I'd borrowed one. Um, thank you, Will, for, for lending me one of those machines. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, I was basically just able to, to get the nonce patterns for each, uh, for each ASIC model. Um, and once we had that, uh, I kind of like played around with the data a little bit and realized that for more or less all the major models, there was a pattern either in the front seven bits or in the back seven bits of of the of the nonce distribution, and so that that leaves a pretty clear fingerprint on chain for each for each machine, and and that's something that you can like use to fingerprint them. So I'm curious to know about why you think this is occurring, like on the chip level. We've had some chip people in the show, and long term, hopefully, we can get more chip people on the show as well, like down from like Intel or stuff like that. Why are these chips guessing in these distributions like this as opposed to being completely random? Or did you look into that at all? I don't know a lot about hardware, to be honest, just uh, that like, <laughs> to, be, to be completely candid. What I, what, what I can tell you though, is that nobody is really optimizing for like perfect sampling uh, in like a uniform pattern, right? What you're, what you're optimizing for is just pure hash rate. So my general thinking on the matter is that this is just a side effect of like optimization. Um, and, and if you, you fiddle with the circuit a little bit and, and it, it gives you a better, better efficiency and better, better hash rate, um, on, uh, but, but at the, at the expense of like, oh, it's not sampling uniformly, like you're not even going to notice. Right. Um, so yeah, the fact that it's kind of present in every, in every machine is, is, uh, every machine except for except for one that we fingerprinted, which uh, was the in a silicon T2T. Um, but more or less everything else leaves, leaves an identifiable pattern. Um, and that, uh, yeah, that, that was a bit of a surprise, but it, 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 it is, uh, yeah, it, it kind of shows that there is something happening there at the hardware level. Gotcha. Okay, so let's go to some of the findings. I'm scrolling through your Twitter thread here. For, for those on audio, definitely, again, check out this thread. Let's look at some of the findings from your work. One thing to explain to me that I'm curious about after we get to that is you had to like normalize or contextualize some of this data to make it completely make sense. For instance, there was one person who knew like an M50 was not probably mining back in you know 2019 because it hadn't even been developed yet. Uh, but first, explain to me like exactly what we're looking at, and then let's go into some more, more of the context for the graphics. Yeah. So this is. Broadly, uh, on the video right now, what we have just on the screen is is our estimates for how many uh, the, the percent distribution of each machine type at uh, over time. Um, and uh, what we have in place is just like metrics for the S9, the M20, all the other micro BT machines that have kind of been released since, and and and, and similarly for the bitmain machines. And we were able to back into this from the nonce distribution. The reason that there's a lot of like kind of machines that are mining earlier on that where you wouldn't expect to, um, one is that manufacturers do actually pre-mine uh, a little bit in advance. They test the machines. They kind of like their friends and family get access to them before before the rest of the world does. Like that's a thing, right? Uh, but that's not really like the bulk of it, especially for things like these like super early S17s and the and the super early other machines that you're seeing there. What that really is a sampling error um, because we don't really have like a great uh, backfill on on the data um which is kind of one of the things we want to improve on is like uh uh getting backfilling the data better getting access to more older machines that are not necessarily mining um our coverage of like the current machine space is actually very good uh and 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 you can kind of see that from the way that we handled some of the uh we have this plot of the control group uh, i don't know if it was in the thread but in the in the in the main report 
Um, and you can kind of see that uh, we don't have it in the thread. But you can kind of see that shrinking over time and that um, that's just a sign that like uh, the model is actually pretty well fit to the the current distribution of machines. But um, yeah, we didn't, you know, we didn't get access to every machine that was hashing back in um, back in like 2019, 2020 when the uh, or the earlier days of this of this plot. So uh, our backfills aren't perfect. So for the graphic itself and for those listening, the largest percentage of the network is composed of S19s and, and some variants like the S19J Pro. Uh, S9s continually shrinking to the point where they're basically not really in the network along with some M20s. Uh, and then you know, you're getting into like some of the, the better micro BT units sort of filling out. Not really seeing anything from Inno Silicon, not really seeing anything else besides that. Tell me if it, like any of this surprised you. I wasn't surprised by the S19 or S19J Pro, uh, but maybe you have some thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that kind of caught us off guard is how slow the XP was to pick up. Um, but then we kind of checked back with a lot of miners, and that's 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 basically squared with everybody's experience, right? Uh, at release, the XPs were massively overpriced for the bear market. Um, they have gradually started to trickle in in terms of like actual usage and uh, 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 Miners actually starting to plug them in as 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 the price of a like a a machine that's still in the box is kind of starting to converge more with the with the market value of, of what it's able to provide if it's hashing. But yeah, so they saw that, and then there was a lot of machine failures with the XP, which will like you you are the authoritative resource on, um, and all of those have kind of like slowed down adoption. Uh, so it is cool that we've kind of started to see that tick up, and we can kind of watch the growth of the XP in real time. But I would say that was a main surprise. I think another thing that just kind of sticks out is like that the S17s fell out, uh, and and that's not really surprising because like they were also awful machines. But it is cool that we caught it, and and it's 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 pretty pretty impressive. I think how severe the fall off was. Definitely, yeah, I like this because I can like go back and look at these images and think of headlines from different Bitcoin miners, or think of things that maybe weren't even public. For example, the S17. I know like. Argo tried to make it work time and time again with their S17s, even like dunking them. Uh, Riot also tried to make it work. So many miners tried to make these machines work and they just like didn't. So you can see them like rising and then just kind of like dying off entirely. And to the XP point, I've heard very similar findings from from a decent amount of miners that like it took, they didn't purchase them for a while. The unit economics made absolutely no sense. We talked about that a lot with like Zach Bradford from CleanSpark. And then the unit economics got better to purchase them. Uh, but there's also like this persistent issue with XP failure rate and DOA rate, which continues to exist. Seems to be like a batch by batch thing. So maybe an update in the future on that. Uh, but again, really interesting findings here. Anything on the micro BT side or on like the other units out there? I mean, the big pull away for like a lot of institutions or people covering this was ant miners are dominating the space, which isn't as surprising, but. I would expect to see like maybe a little bit more from some of the other miners out there. Yeah, no, I think that's that's broadly in line with with what, what we thought as well. Like the 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 micro BT machines uh, are a slightly smaller share than I think you'd anticipate, but it, it also kind of makes sense if you just think about it, right? Like they've historically had uh, quite a few manufacturing problems, like trouble getting trouble getting access to the boundaries in a way that like Bitmain really hasn't. Uh, so everybody like loves using micro BT machines, I think, but just uh, uh, from a supply chain perspective, like Bitmain is still very, very dominant. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people would like to purchase them, which I guess today or yesterday we had the news that Riot is purchasing a lot of uh, micro BT machines. So maybe that's a thing more in the future. Okay, let's go to the next point, which was sort of some of like the takeaways from this. Like NAS analysis is great, but oftentimes people are like, okay, what do I do with this? Well, here's one extremely practical use case for this sort of research, which is the energy pull of the network. Of course, this energy debate is like on Capitol Hill nowadays. Like there's people hiring like dozens of armies of lobbyists to go like fight this whole issue. And we have the most accurate energy depiction of the Bitcoin mining network, thanks to your research. Back it out a little bit for our audience so they understand how we're able to understand the energy uh, pull for the Bitcoin mining network from your data. And then any other thoughts comparative to the Cambridge or the Digiconomist ones that we also have on the screen right now? Yeah. Um, so we have our distribution of nonces that's on the Bitcoin chain. Uh, and then we have our distribution of nonces that we've sampled from our machines. Uh, we set up a proxy pool to basically just intercept 
the share submissions from um, the uh, machines that we'd rented or, or borrowed um, and kind of stored those. So that's our training set. And then, and then the, the blockchain data is our test set effectively. Um, and uh, we use that to back into a machine distribution. Once we have a machine distribution, we can just compare it with the manufacturer specs on um, on things like power consumption and and relative to hash rate, right? Um, and so generally, the way that that's 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 referenced is in joules per terahash or, or network efficiency. Uh, once you have your network efficiency number, you just invert it and multiply it by the hash rate, and uh, or sorry, you just multiply it by the hash rate, and that'll give you a power draw. Uh, and then we generally we also adjust for uh, things like PUE, which is just the the uh, effectively the the lossiness of of uh, energy in the process. Um, so stuff that like generally line loss and 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 energy going to fan stuff like that. Um, and so we just use the same numbers as Cambridge for that because we don't really have any special insight there. But yeah, the result is generally a figure that's significantly more stable than most of the other uh, energy estimates out there. Um, because the existing energy consumption estimates bake in, uh, they 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 also try to estimate um, the machine distribution, but they kind of do it in a way that's very dependent on 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 market conditions. Um, so if price runs, they'll kind of assume that a lot of miners that otherwise would have been unprofitable are just like suddenly getting plugged in, right? Uh, and that's not really in the real world like how things work. Um, so. Our our estimates are a lot more stable because like our our efficiency uh, in joules per terahash doesn't doesn't wiggle quite as much as everybody else's. Uh, and then uh, uh, as well, you can kind of see that like, and this is this is very much in line with what you'd anticipate. Um, our energy consumption doesn't really scale like one to one with uh, with network hash rate because like and actually I think the biggest point on that you can see this is 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 right around like May twenty twenty one. Uh, hash rate fell off a cliff because of the China ban. Um, the hash rate that came back online was significantly more efficient than the hash rate that left because you had a lot of older machines that were just like left in China. Um, they, they they weren't economical to transport or especially with the S17s, like this was kind of the, the, the kill stroke, right? Like everybody just ditched them there. They, they would have broken in transit. They're not worth the, they're not worth the space. And now suddenly there's also like this uh, really big cap in how much available capacity there is. Uh, and and so you just need to plug in the most efficient machines possible. So yeah, we can see that like energy consumption doesn't scale quite linearly with hash rate. It's not that responsive to price. Um, it's 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 primarily you know it's it's just a it's it's a it's a function of hash price. But people aren't like plugging in their their S sevens just because like it's theoretically profitable to do that because uh, ultimately you still are l- largely constrained by by capacity. Gotcha. Yeah, the one thing that stands out to me, of course, with this is the inversion between the Cambridge and Coinmetrics report and your report and the Digiconomist report, which used price as a function, if I remember it correctly. And so that because it goes completely different ways in that May 2021 moment, we expect all this hash rate to go offline and and you'd have a lower power draw for the network. Uh, they expect it to keep going up. Looking at these three, they're all very different ways of monitoring the network. The Cambridge one was sort of the gold standard before your report was updated. What do you think happens with these two reports, given that they're basically outdated or obsolete at this point? I, I still really like the Cambridge report. I think it's it's actually a very good just like sanity check on our numbers um, and kind of vice versa, right? Uh, and I think like their methodology was a really big inspiration for us. Like I said, like we, 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 we kind of just like uh, use the same PUE numbers as they did, not because we think they're necessarily the best, but just because we, we, we think it's like a, a good reference point and, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty solid. Um, and, uh, and, and because we want to kind of have this like one-to-one comparison. Um, so I, I still think the Cambridge report is like, is very high quality, right? They do have this issue where there's a lot of like kind of just like older models and 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 stuff like that 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 shouldn't really be considered in the data set that they're that they're they're still including. That is something that they like recently kind of addressed by 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 pruning machine age on their methodology. Um, so they're working on it. I, I think it's also just good to have like you know one number that's based on network data, one number that's based kind of more on market data, and 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 and, and kind of reference them against each other. But I think especially and 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 you can actually see that during like. Uh, during bear markets, our numbers are very, very similar. 
Uh, but it is, I think, especially during bull markets, like when hopefully someday the the, the bull market comes back, um, it'll be useful to kind of benchmark like, okay, our, our numbers against theirs because ours are likely to be much less responsive to uh, uh, to market conditions. And, and I think theirs can generally like overstate, overstate energy consumption significantly during that time. As far as DigiConomist, I don't have much to say there apart from... I don't know what's the upside down hockey stick going on in like 2022. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of all I have to say there. Like, uh, yeah. And, and I think like Cambridge, we Cambridge, Cambridge, we really respect. We really like them. Uh, I, I hope they keep working on it. Yeah. I'm interested to see where this one is picked up. We've seen the Cambridge report used, I believe in like DC circles. Um, so I'd expect this one to find its way there as well, hopefully in the future. So if you are a Bitcoin miner out there who does like public reporting or lobbying, definitely pick this up as a most accurate way of looking at the market. Let's talk about like future products for this. I already saw a few people in the mentions and comments after you reported this talking about like, hey, we could do this sort of thing or this sort of thing using the data. Has anything stood out to you so far? Any other projects that you're looking at being like, hey, this is like the next step for this data, which can help people understand the Bitcoin network more. Um, yeah, so I really like our efficiency numbers. I think those are um, very helpful for miners. Like generally you want to know where you sit on on the network efficiency scale. And uh, I think I think there's still a lot of work that can kind of be done like there, like modeling uh, uh, efficiency and responsiveness to market conditions, stuff like that, uh, network conditions. So I think that's still, that's still quite interesting. Um, I think there's some interesting security work as well that can kind of be done there. Uh, like you said, like the bitmain bitmain dominance is just, I think, not that much higher than people uh, who are in the industry are 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 aware of, but is is maybe is very high, right? Um, so I think there's a lot of I, I think there's I think there's quite a bit of uh, research that should be done on that side as well. Um, and yeah, otherwise, I think like we we have some numbers on e-waste. I think those could still stand to be refined pretty significantly. What we did there is just kind of pretty much measure uh effectively the, the 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 peaks and valleys in in per machine hash rate and compare them um and if a machine like falls offline uh we consider it to be permanently offline and and basically junked um and that gives you like also just like a, a pretty good a pretty good benchmark for uh how many machines have been thrown out provided they were ever plugged in and we combine that with just an internal churn term that's based on like the depreciation figures that uh that most public miners put out and I still think there's stuff to be done there as well, uh, if, if if we want to get a, a more accurate estimate. But but I think that one is um, much better than the current state of the art. So gotcha. Yeah, one thing I thought about with this is like all most data is like a lagging indicator of performance and interest for miners who are always looking at their peers and being like, hey, what are they purchasing? What are they purchasing? I thought this might be an interesting tool for them to be like, okay, what is like our general competitor using? on the network and then trying to pair that with some sort of energy cost uh, across different like geographies. Is there any other things that we can do on that sort of front to help inform miners about like purchases for machines going to different periods? Yeah, the the, the Pubco purchase orders are definitely like, I think very uh, good supplementary data. The thing is the American miners tend, tend to skew more efficient because uh, they have better access to financing. Energy here is a little more expensive than it is in other parts of the world. So they, they, they just have to be more efficient. Um, and, uh, and just because they've grown at such a rapid clip pretty recently. So they, they have more new machines than they have old machines. Um, so I think having just like a more network wide indicator is very useful there as well. But yeah, I think they should be presented in tandem, kind of see what machines are getting plugged in, uh, either as, as kind of like a leading indicator, which is through the purchase orders, but you don't really know what's going to happen in between when the machines are bought and, and, and when, or if they actually get plugged in. And kind of this more lagging indicator, but not not lagging by a lot by by thirty days um, that we have here. So, okay, one last question on this: What about when new machines come online, or like different variants of machines? Sort of going back to the earlier point of conversation, but I'm thinking like there's already been an S19 J Pro Plus that's coming out right now. So, how do you guys think about like bringing these onto your data? Is it the same process? Um, so I worked with the CoinMetrics guys on publication on this, um, and they're also going to be taking over on uh, actually adding new machines and, and, and things like that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think the plan is to just keep the uh, 
keep the model as current as possible. Um, it'll obviously take us some time to like source the machines and plug them in and, 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 and get like this, this test data, um, or sorry, get the, get the training data for each, for each model. Um, but yeah, the plan is to, the, the model is very updatable. So, uh, we can, we can just add new machines as they come online. Love that. Anything else audience should know about before we close out for the day? Not a ton on my end. My, my handle you can is show yourself. Help me. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just like, I'm around, hit me up. Uh, I love data. I love mining. I, I kind of like, uh, do a lot of trading as well. So, um, yeah, cool. if you're interested in this kind of stuff, let me know and, and, and we should chat. Kareem is being humble. If you're listening to this and you are interested in mining data, go talk to him. If you're also, again, a lobbyist or you work in uh, lawyer land, DC state stuff, be sure to update your energy models by using this information. It's the best on the network. Uh, thanks, Kareem, for your time. And we'll see you again on the show soon, I'm sure. Thanks, Will.